and welcome to another episode of Mobility Mastery Monday Pop q and I'm Alicia and Stefan here, my man, is going to surprise me with a question. I have no idea what he's about to ask me. We're going to see where the conversation leads and take you along for the ride. Hey guys, today's topic is the nervous system. So I want to know what your experience is with how fascia relates to the nervous system. How much time you got? <laughs> I don't know. We could go at least a few hours, right? Uh, uh, we'll yeah. keep it short. I just want to kind of cover some of the basics, hear what some of your introductory thoughts are on it, and just give people kind of a, a brief demo of your experience with fascia and the nervous system uh, and your general thoughts on it. Yep. Yeah, well, this is a rabbit hole. It's one of the most fascinating aspects of what I do, though, so uh, we could certainly be here all day, but we'll try to be briefish. Um, so, uh, fascia is directly connected to the nervous system because fascia wraps every nerve ending, um, and a lot of those nerve messages travel through the fascial system via the extracellular matrix, <laughs> ECM, um, and uh, there's Basically, like what I this is kind of my theory of, uh, after working with so many people since 2008 doing this work um, that if the nervous system is kind of like the pen writing or literally writing our life story every single moment we're alive, the nervous system is recording something about what's happening in our lives, then fascia is the paper that it's written on um, or the book that it's written on. So. The nervous system is the pen, fascia is the paper. So some things get um, written on the fascia and they stay there. Others get kind of written and then maybe erased um, and moved out or replaced with something else. Okay. Um, that's so interesting. That's like a good place to start, I guess. So I guess I'm curious uh, about your, that's, <laughs> huh. based on our past conversations, that's not the metaphor that I would have necessarily uh, ascribed to that. But um, maybe you can unwrap a little bit about what you mean um, by fascia being the paper and the nervous system being the pen by talking about your private practice and maybe some uh, pretty extreme examples of how you've seen the fascia interacting with the nervous system in, the pri in your private practice. Yeah, so I started looking at the nervous system um, because it's impossible not to touch it or talk to it when you work with fascia um, and the reason for that again is because every nerve ending is coded in a piece of fascia uh, and it's kind of like the communication network mm -hmm. of the body those two things but the nerve signals are, are different and the nervous system itself is different it's a different mechanism than the actual fascia the fascia itself is the physical matrix that gives us our texture and shape and that texture and shape is determined by our nervous system um, predominantly, not 100%, but you know, again, it depends on our sports, our habits. Sure. But somebody with a particular nervous system, um, let's call it like wiring or archetype, is could play the same exact sport as someone else with a different nervous system pattern or archetype, um, and they're gonna get injured way more than this other person. So, is there an example <laughs> in your private practice of like where you've encountered, like, so, so, a situation where um, it, I guess the connection between the fascia and the nervous system was obvious by like what occurred when you were helping them get them out of pain every single client <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even know where to start so that. no <laughs> um, no I mean there are some so I mean we could talk about my experimental work with the nervous system but what gave me the idea to even do experimental work with the nervous system in particular around healing nervous system patterns, like ways that we get stuck in behaviors or thoughts that, you know, thought patterns or spirals or, um, but what gave me the idea to do that in the first place is the fact that uh, whenever I step on somebody, I don't, no matter who you are, there's a reactivity pattern that mm -hmm. happens because it's intense. And it basically mimics what happens to you in life when you're confronted by intensity, um, whether it's someone cutting you off in traffic or a loved one bringing something really hard to hear to you or confronting you with something or your kid yelling at you or your, whatever the case may be. 
when we're confronted by something that is determined intense, perceived as intense by us, um, our nervous system has a similar reactivity pattern. So the way someone, um, so examples of that would be I, when I step on somebody new for the first time, they might start giggling uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or they might brace, suck in their breath, and hold it just to get through. That's not familiar. <laughs> or they might go... <laughs> Seriously, true. like I actually have so many clients <laughs> that make airplane noises with their mouth. <laughs> just to get through it. Wait, one more time? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that, that reactivity pattern is indicative of their nervous system, our nervous system wiring. Now you've known mm -hmm. for probably for a long time, um, since the beginning of you starting to work on people that fascia are like all, all of our nerve endings are coded in fascia. So when was it that you re like made the connection that, oh, they're, they're like, actually specific categories of nervous systems and when I when I um, engage the fascia like in the way that I am that category is showing up like this a, this is a type of nervous system this is a type of nervous system when did you start realizing that like there were these commonalities um, I mean a lot of it really was talking to you <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, but but you know, Getting like I bombarded with questions I, about yeah, it. Uh huh. Sure. And then, you know, I'm a verbal processor, so I, concrete ideas land in me as like, yeah, that feels right when I say it out loud to somebody, mm -hmm. or no, it doesn't feel right, or hey, I have a question about this. So, um, but it's been probably a couple of years that I've been swirling around some of these hypotheses, if you will, and I certainly don't have all the like tight. I don't have the nervous system types typed sure. out. Yet. Sure, yeah. I just know very common patterns um, okay. that I see repeatedly. So there's probably some spectrum of patterns in the realm of like 7, 9, 12, 13, I don't, somewhere in there. But like there's not an unlimited number of um, how we're wired because there are definitely patterns to how we're wired. Okay. Um, so I guess <laughs> that kind of leads me to what... What is it? What are the implications of this interplay between fascia and the nervous system? Um, yeah, like what? What are the implications when it comes to uh, getting people out of pain and also, more neurologically speaking, breaking patterns? You know, there's. Uh, we haven't gone too into depth with this, but I can say from like, having worked with you and just being around you and talking to you about your work that there is. There's definitely, I mean, there's neurological associations to whatever pain patterns we have. And then there sometimes are just simply neurological patterns. Um, and it seems like this interplay between fascia and the nervous system can bring that out. So I guess, can you talk some about the implications of that? Yep. I mean, you know, if <laughs> the brain rules everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then under, it's like if that's the, if there's a hierarchy there of like who rules what in the human being, um, the brain really rules everything. And then, and that includes our subconscious as well as our conscious brain. Sure. Um, so if someone's conscious brain has a belief, um, and this has happened repeatedly in my private practice where someone will come in and they say, well, I don't expect it. I don't expect immediate results. Mm -hmm. They don't get an immediate result. Like I can't, Naturally. I, yeah. every, every single person who said that doesn't get an immediate result. Whereas people who actually come in really open and hungry and maybe they read my website and they tell me while we're going over the intake form like when I found your website I just have this feeling like this is the thing that's gonna help me uh. and they get an instant result mm -hmm. like it's amazing so um, our conscious and subconscious brain rule rules what can happen physically and um, I, I guess like that kind of ties into what we were talking about in our last uh, video do we have that I don't know but I know at some point we were talking about biology of belief and uh, Bruce Lipton and, you know, basically that interaction, like what yeah. people are orienting with. Like, so, you know, this is the rabbit hole because, sure, sure. you know, talking about one aspect leads to another thing, leads to another thing, leads to another thing. I'm sure we'll have another um, <laughs> video on this, probably several more. But, yeah, I guess like the fascinating thing, though, is how what all of those have in common. So what, what our brain has in common, 
with the nervous system, which has in common with our bones, with our muscles, with our beliefs, with our psychology, with our trauma, like what all of those have in common is fascia. That is why I work with fascia. That's why I'm so fascinated after nine years, even though I'm someone who gets really bored easily, mm -hmm. it's still so interesting to me because fascia touches all these other things. So you, you like by working with fascia, I can access someone's subconscious beliefs that they don't even know or subconscious patterns that are running them um, and wreaking havoc in their life. And it may or may not be manifesting physically in a knowable way to them, though it is manifesting physically, huh. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I guess <laughs> the I rabbit hole topic. is deep. I know, I love uh, this topic. But. <laughs> I, I want to try to uh, sum it up with one more question that's got a couple of questions inside it. Maybe you can unpack this. But uh, all that said, do you think that fascia itself, like the fascial system, is an organ? I know you've talked a little bit about this on your blog. Um, and I guess to me, maybe I'm defining it incorrectly, but uh, an organ is just a collection of tissues that serves a specific function. And so if if that's like how we're defining organ, then what would you say is the function of, the primary function of fascia? <laughs> Ooh, oh, I don't, yeah. Tough questions, uh. come on. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Uh, I know. You guys, he does this to me all the time and he's never asked me that one. You're um, welcome. <laughs> so, okay. Yes, I do think it's an organ. However, it feels, feels different than all the others. It, 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 again, this is just feeling based on my, I don't have the science behind this. I don't, um, but it, it seems to me like it is actually the physical manifestation, it's like the physical manifestation and form of who we are that is intangible otherwise. Uh huh. Well, it, there, you know, there has been like saying that made me think of something else, and we'll cut the rabbit hole short here in a second. <laughs> but it, there has been some research on um, fascia's ability to store uh, memory, uh, visceral memory. Yes. So that's why sometimes. A really intense situation or a trauma um, has been stored in someone's body and they don't even remember it. But when you contact the fascia through um, breaking up a fascial adhesion, yes, yeah, a I, lot of times that memory can come back out. That's yeah. why. I, that's why I'm asking, like, what so, is its purpose? If it's if it's something, if it's an organ that somehow stores memory and can recall that memory given a certain trigger, like, what is the real purpose of it? So think about, so the metaphor that we started with, so we'll, we'll bring it full circle. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I'll make this metaphor, even, I guess, even better. It's better than a pen writing a story, if you will. I'm a writer, so I like that metaphor. But if each one of us is a work of art, like how we move through life is our work of art, who we are, how we inhabit life, what we do with our life is our work of art, that like it's the essence of who we are it's that work of art like it's the artist i guess inside it's not just it's not just like like me visually seeing you but like really like who you are the the texture of that is your fascia but the really cool thing is we can throw a bunch of turpentine on that you know canvas and then repaint it if we want mm -hmm. and we can do that we can do that through probably other modalities than, you know, what I do, kinetics work or whatever, um, than through the physical, but I think that they're going to take longer. So for example, changing your mindset, um, changing your belief structures, things uh, like neurolinguistic yes, programming, neurolinguistic or... programming, um, the idea of neuroplasticity and the brain being able to change itself. If you can change your brain, your body will change. So, but what I have found in my practice over and over is that it's actually faster to change the body. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, the brain has to allow that change in order for it to allow that change, the brain has to change. Mm. Um, and the work I do is so intense and novel and actually often hilarious, like I'm bringing in laughter because it is intense. <laughs> um, novelty and laughter and movement have all been shown to interrupt nervous system patterns and change the brain. 
So it's more novel to change the medium, the paper that you're drawing your artwork on than it is to try to change the way that you draw after 30 years of drawing. Yes. Cool. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yep, let's hope so. <laughs> all right, uh, that's all I have. Did you have anything else? Oh, no, I, I mean, I won't, yeah. I have, I have <laughs> I'm so sure we'll much. do more videos on this. I guess, like, what I want people to know or take away from this is, um, it, it is because of what I know about fascia and the fact that it is this organ for us of like, of, of, of it being the texture and shape of who we ultimately are inside, not just our physical body. Um, and we can change it, but like we can change, like I, you know, I've worked with so many people who believed they would never run again or thought they had to give up doing X sport or were told by a physical therapist, you're never going to walk again without pain, without knee pain. You need knee replacement surgery. Um, and in a lot of those cases, well, all the cases of clients coming to me like that, um, the people that I'm speaking of right now, like they're fine, they're walking again. But I had, but I, it was a combination, a one, two whammy of like change, change the fascia, change the body, and then the brain starts to change too. So I do a lot of like coaching with my clients to get them doing the thing they're afraid of again. But I guess like it's to me it's the most amazing frontier for using the body to change the brain. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, that is such an awesome topic. I'm sure we're gonna return to it over and over because it's a yeah. theme that runs through everything. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for that awesome yep. topic this week. I uh, can't wait to dive in even more. Um, if you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. Share it with your friends and family. Um, if you want to read the little blog post and share it on Facebook, you can click the link below. Um, and don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and then also on our blog, mobilitymastery.com. It's free and you will get notified via email when new episodes go out plus other insider info. And that is it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Hey, hold on. I want you guys to see something. So hopefully we can get this in the video. I don't know. But we have a friend with us. He's come to watch. He's been watching the entire time. Yeah, hey. What's up, man? Did you like the video? I think you liked it. Yeah, it's all good, dude. Alright man, we'll catch you later. I'm not gonna mess with you. <laughs>